Great. Uh, okay, continue. Uh, today, we are going to speak about uh, life cycle owners and why they are important for the UI, especially because we are uh, seeing so many changes in the last couple of, of, of weeks with Jetta Compose, with Light Data. I know there is a lot of concerns about if Light Data is going to be deprecated or is going to be stable for a, for a little while. So today we are going to be talking about that. Okay. Oh, uh, no. Jesus Christ. Just give me one second. I know the best uh, running presentation, like you can notice. Sorry for that. Uh, I think that now it's, I don't know why he's doing that. Just give me one second. I'm so sorry. He's pushing me outside. Uh, just give me one second. I'm gonna stop, uh, uh, I'm gonna stop sharing. Just, hmm, sorry for that. Me like this is how it always happens with the presentations. We ran through it and it worked perfectly. <laughs> then the moment you try to share, know. everything goes I to know. hell. Oh, now I get it. And now I get it. I was I was playing the last the or last slide, <laughs> and now it's working. Okay, now that should be working. Okay, I'm so sorry. No problem. Okay, now I think it looks fine, right? Yep. Looks great. Okay, so um, I know there is a lot of concerns about uh, like data flows and how everything is going. So today we are going to address all of that concerns, and we are going to talk about something really important that is cleaning the UI, um, making sure that the UI is working. So let's discuss life cycle owners because everything has a life cycle, and when I say everything, I mean your general application has a life cycle. Uh, it starts, goes to resume, goes on and pause, goes, uh, and it goes to on a stop, and then it goes destroy it, right? This is your general application. I'm not even talking about activities or your fragments or your dialogues because they are also has a life cycle, right? Uh, for your activity, for your fragment, and your classes, they have life cycles. So um, every life cycle that you are addressing, that you are um, building, Every, every activity, every fragment, your general application, everything has a life cycle. It goes through a process when it's created, when it's used, to when it's destroyed, right? Uh, life cycle depends on a lot of things, especially uh, there is uh, two interfaces, a life cycle and life cycle owner. These little interfaces has uh, some details inside of it. Uh, life cycle is in charge of the state and events that are thrown around um, around uh, the life cycle. <laughs> and your life cycle owner makes sure that every stage and every event is reported to the process, to the, um, to the owner of the life cycle owner, right? The life cycle owner is your fragment, for example, is your activity, is uh, the class, is your general application, right? Uh, and the life cycle is in charge just to give you uh, the full picture of where is this activity is is going on resume is going on pause is going on non stop and it, it, it gives you all this uh, this um, like big picture right uh, life cycle states uh, are pretty much stages in a graph uh, they work like a, like an enum uh, stages states uh, are attached to the stage of the activity. And uh, they are mostly pretty much highly bound to the life cycle of the application. Uh, they, have, um, they have some of the operations that are going over the life cycle. They go to undestroy it, initialize it, create it, start it, and resume it. Because every stage actually is, uh, is if you go to the, to the code inside Android, you will notice that the stage are actually uh, just, just a couple of variables that are in a, in a new num, uh, and they are, uh, and these variables 
have some functions that make you give you the chance to complete a, a stage, right? Uh, they are uh, pretty much to make sure that uh, everything that is going in your in your in your chart of the stages uh, are going well through, right? They give you the stage. They give you the the the, the pretty much the position of a map uh, of your life cycle owner, right? Uh, events are the edges between the other stages, right? The ones are variables. The other ones uh, give you pretty much they give you the chance to use that uh, that state, right? So the the states are, are only variables, but the events are actually the code that is making everything works, right? Uh, they have uh, these operations when they give you the chance to understand um, which is the next stage of your life cycle. If you are on resume, you can go to, you have two options on resume, right? You can go on pause or you can go, uh, or you can go to on stop or you can go to something like that, right? Uh, that's the life cycle of your activity. And the events, um, the events at the end of the day are functions. They are not an enum like the, like the states. They give you the chance to return the event that will be reported to the life cycle when it's leaving some specific stage. For example, uh, there is a function that is called down from. Down from gives you the event, um, the event that is leaving the stage to a lower one, right? Uh, there is another one that give you uh, the higher event that you are going to end up once this stage is, is completed, right? Uh, this is really important because with uh, having a stage and having events give you the full picture of where are you standing in your life cycle of your activity or your fragments or your dialogues or even your application. Uh, there, there's a really cool thing about the events because they are functions that that means that you can be that they can be used on regular classes. If you can use events in a regular class, you are making the classes to have a life cycle. You are you are attaching both of uh, two components that you were not um, aware you can attach. Right? Uh, you can track on resume or on pause. Uh, this is quite common. Uh, you can track uh, your network state. Uh, you can try tr track a lot of things, maybe as even even your Bluetooth uh, changes, right? So there is a uh, there is a couple of things that you might know about uh, using the events on a specific class. They have to be attached to um, an activity or maybe uh, your general application or maybe a fragment because at the end of the day, they need to be attached or they need to be aware of the life cycle, right? So there is this class that is called process life cycle owner that give you the chance to have a whole, a whole picture of your, of your application process. And uh, this is really cool because if you have the full picture of your application, you can uh, end up doing some tasks that you might not know how to do if you have multiple activities and multiple fragments, right? Uh, one example is that your general application at the end of the day is an activity. Maybe you are have fragments and you might have uh, multiple dialogues. If you are on Jetpack Compose, uh, you might not need this, right? Because you might not need any fragments at all, but I, we are gonna discuss that later. Uh, for, for this life cycle events, to make to attach the lifecycle events to a process lifecycle owner, you just have to extend lifecycle observer. Lifecycle observer will give you the control of the lifecycle when you are extending. Uh, it will give you pretty much a conglomeration of all the events that will be triggered in your application. So you can do, uh, maybe you can start tracking your network connection, just track, uh, for on pause and for on resume, for foreground and background in your application, just in just this class that is Lifecycle Observer. But, but let's see how it, how it looks, right? Um, the first part is that you are you might want to do these two functions, right? You want to start tracking on, on the start of your application. Uh, this, is, this will give you 
the, the picture when the app is started or is resumed. Uh, they, they are, I know it sounds like, like weird, like it's on a started application, why is going to be on resume? Uh, and, and the reason is because you, if you, you start looking on Lifecycle Observer, the class inside of Lifecycle Observer, you will notice that onCreate is just la launched just once. It doesn't matter if you have multiple activities, if you have multiple fragments, it will be launched just once. So now your, your application will be in foreground once the US start uh, tracking everything on a start, right? So you can just, just use on a start and that will be okay. Uh, for maybe you will be track you for that you will be tracking the the foreground of your application right you and you need to track the the background of the application so you might want to do uh, another function that is going to be on a stop application just because I'm gonna call it like, like that uh, and this this function you need to be need to be executed when the when the application moves to background maybe in this will include uh, switching one app from another, maybe moving to the task manager, uh, answering a call, everything that we want to track that is going outside our applications is gonna be tracked in this place, right? Um, and you can use this uh, annotation process that, uh, that exists on, on Lifecycle Observer that is on Lifecycle Event when you are uh, addressing the events that we were discussing at the beginning of this talk, right? So the events, like, like you can see the events are uh, an enum, but these enums are being triggered by a function. So every time you, are, you want to see on a star and on resume, uh, the, the process will be dispatched for that specific events. So you will, every time this function is, is getting executed, executed uh, you, you will notice that your app will be always, always on foreground, right? And the part of on pause and on the stop will be dispatched only after a delay, right? It's not going to be uh, automatic, like it's not, it's not going to go like the activities and the fragments when you want to go to, uh, maybe you, you switch from fragments and the, and the event on, on on pause is gonna be triggered on the first fragment. It's not going to be like that. Why? Because you need to be you have you need to have a, a little delay. So if the if the apps goes over a rotation move, the life cycle observer, this class that is going to be the app owner of the of all the life cycle of or your general application, will be stayed alive. And, 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 the, and this process will not be created again. So this survives a uh, rotation mode. Uh, it's quite important because maybe you have an application that needs to go, maybe show some uh, pin screen, maybe some password screen every time the user goes on a background thread. So if you want to do that, uh, this is the correct, the, the, the simplest way to do it, right? having a, a, the trustability of your general lifecycle owner and try to address that. Uh, you can start using this uh, code, adding just this uh, little process lifecycle owner to your main application. Uh, and it will look like this. Uh, you will get the process lifecycle owner. Uh, you will add that observer to the, own, uh, the function that has an observer. And that will be all. You can start tracking all your uh, all your application when it goes to foreground and when it goes to background, right? Uh, I have an, a specific example for this specific case uh, that I have in my Medium blog that is called foreground and background. And it gives you the chance to solve the problem on going on pause and going on resume using Lifecycle Observer. This also works for network. Uh, if you want to track, maybe fetch some specific data when you have network or maybe when you are specifically only on foreground, uh, you can do this with this. Um, you can do this with using Lifecycle Observer, uh, and it's really cool because uh, it doesn't consume a lot of memory and is quite uh, developer friendly and user friendly. <laughs> so you can give it a try. Uh, it's on my blog post. It's a, a really small blog post, but uh, I, I assure you that it's more than enough. It will be. It will give you the full picture of it. 
right? Um, life cycle depends uh, on a lot of things, like I was telling you in the beginning of this show, the life cycle and the events. And we, we go to over the part of the life cycle, right? Now we need to talk about life cycle owner. Life cycle owner is a huge, huge callus. Um, you, know, you don't need to do anything for fragments and activities to start consuming it. You probably already know that. Uh, the, the life cycle owner already is the activity and the fragment. Uh, it gives you the chance to know the life cycle where the, where the activity is. So you can execute some specific part of your code when the app is and start it, don't resume it, don't pause it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then, then you set it for on destroy. It's quite dangerous, but uh, you can use it for the other, the other, um, the other uh, events that I was saying. So, but what is going on exactly with lifecycle owner? Let's, let's deep dive on it, right? The fragment, uh, at the end of the day, the fragment will be initialized and it will initialize a life cycle variable. This, uh, this will also initialize a life cycle register. It will give you the chance to have uh, all the registers that are going to be added, all the observers. Uh, so you can, so you will be setting up a view tree life cycle owner. A view tree life cycle owner reports the life cycle to the owner. It gives you feedback. It gives feedback to the, to the fragment. It, it, it always gives you like uh, the position you are in this huge map of life cycles. Uh, it reports the life cycle of the view uh, and you will have a, a store owner. The store owner will be track all the ascensors of the view model store owner. The, so it will give you the chance to collect all the observers and keep it inside of the fragment. So it will, will at the end of the day, the fragment will have all the traceability uh, of the life cycle of, of the life cycle of the fragment, and it will have of the observers and give you the chance to report the save state of the last pass of the past owners. So if you have your fragment, the fragment knows already knows where it is, right? It will report these events to the life cycle and the life cycle will take us to address the observers. So if you need to execute an observer, when you are going on resume, the fragment will notice when it will be executed. That's, that's really cool because it's at the, end of the, uh, at the end of the day, the life cycle is an state machine. Uh, you can, like I was saying, you can have life cycle register that handles all the observers and add these observers to the, to the fragments and activities. It handles, every time you put uh, an activity and you, you just add an observer, this uh, function is getting uh, called and it will be handled on the dispatch of the events and process. Uh, add, you have uh, one important part that is called on life cycle event on life cycle events give you the event that was using in the life cycle and is extracted over the owner, right? Uh, it's, a, it's a little function, it's, it's just, just an interface that gives you the value of the event. Let's remember that events are enums. So actually events are uh, functions that consume the enums that are the state. Right? So you will have uh, this, this little function and this function will be got and get the value and it will make everything works. This function is the most amazing function we might have. <laughs> uh, and the view tree life cycle owner gives you the tree, the information, all the, all, the, all the possible variables that have your life cycle owner and all the variables that has gone over your fragment, over your activity, right? Um, it gives you the report. It gives you always the last report. Um, it it gives you the chance to uh, manage the life. Uh, the, it gives you the chance to manage the, the life cycle owner, so they, so he can manage the views. Uh, in pretty much, you can set, you can get uh, everything between, and it make it work, right? So you might be using life cycle owners using like that, right? So today I want to discuss the most important part over live data versus flow. And 
wildlife data works right now, but also why you should be looking at flows to maybe a migration in your possible, in, in your apps. Like data probably will not get deprecated, at least not yet. Uh, and, and I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> like, like data, uh, when you're using a live data for a view model, you probably have this, right? You have your view model and you have a object that is a live data that is exposed to your live data and you have an observe, uh, an observe right? Uh, this observe will, will give you the, the, the information that is pushed to the, to the live data, right? And you have, if you are using an activity, you will have the, the word piece. If you are using a fragment, you will have a view lifecycle owner. Why? An activity already knows that the view lifecycle owner is the activity. And a fragment needs to have the specific reference that you want to have the lifecycle owner of the fragment and not the activity. So you need to be, you need to specify that. Right? When you are doing this, uh, the live data observer, start the observ observation of this uh, live data when the stage is started on resume, right? Uh, what is going on inside of this little function of observer, like you can notice it's on the main thread. Like we make sure we do an assert main thread uh, for, this, for this function. So everything that is going over a live data is running on there. It's, it's just running on the main thread. Uh, I know it makes sense because you are pushing to the view, blah, 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 but sometimes the view is quite heavy, so you need to be careful there. Um, inside you will have, a, it will search for the owner, will get the life cycle, and will be checking that the life cycle is not destroyed. <laughs> this is Quite weird, right? The live data should know that the uh, should be life cycle awareness and have life cycle awareness, so doesn't try to do anything of this. So if the if the variable is is getting pushed to the destroy it, uh, you just it will return. It will not do anything. Uh, it will have a, a bound observer. This bound observer will be grabbing the the, the object. Will be uh, adding it to the list and it will check that if, it's, if it doesn't exist, if, if it's attached to another object, owner, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If it is, uh, it will throw this uh, little um, error that you cannot add the same observer with different life cycles and it makes all the sense of the world because if you have two observers that are doing the same job in different uh, life cycle owners, maybe you are leaking something, maybe there is something wrong in there uh, and you need to check it out. And at the end, the last line, the owner goes to the uh, goes and get the life cycle, and the life cycle adds the observer to the fragment and activity. So every time you are doing the first function we were seeing, you are actually doing the last function. You are only adding observers. So you can add as many observers as you want, regardless of the or regardless of everything that you are doing it in your app. So that's quite cool. It's quite simple, right? It makes all the sense in the words uh, how it's working on, on, on Android, right? And how like data are cool. Uh, like I said, it's highly bound to the main thread. Uh, there is no concept of suspend functions. There is no concept of that. Like that happened on the main thread and needs to happen on the main thread. Uh, they are highly bound to Android. And I know, I know this sounds weird because we are talking about Android, but I mean like the framework, you know, the code base. Uh, there is a, a lot of problems when attached, when trying to collect uh, like data from activities, fragments and dialogues at the same time, uh, especially when you are trying to make a huge collection uh, of all the attached observers to just one activity that, might have tons of fragments. And uh, so everything just get messier and messier every time, everything, every time you try to open a new live data. So that's quite complex, uh, especially because architecture, like general architecture of Android or maybe the architecture that you are, uh, you are creating in your job, maybe in your, in your site project, 
it's quite complex, right? We made architecture in Android complex because we believe in scalability and we believe in, in stability. So we, we try to, to keep it simple, but at the end of the day, it's quite complex, right? Uh, we have some repositories, we might have some view models, and maybe we have some UIs. If we are dividing things, you might, you might have these, uh, these divisions, right? Uh, when you are talking about um, repositories, you might have only, only Kotlin code. And this is, this is quite complex, right? Only Kotlin code means that you don't have activities, maybe you don't have fragments, you are not going to get a string and go into the string files. Maybe you are not doing things like, I don't know, maybe you are not doing things like uh, things on the view. Maybe you don't have buttons in here. Nothing of that. It's pure Kotlin code. You, you might have things like uh, your network connections, uh, your database, your encryptation partners, and, and everything in there. But at the end of the day, this is only Kotlin. Uh, for the view models and the UIs, well, you know, view model is a, a part of the Android framework, is not part of Kotlin framework. So this part of the UI and the view model, well, Android is welcome here. But if you are uh, if you are using something, you might you be using something like this. You have uh, some flows, and maybe you have you change your live data. You are not using live data on your repository. You are using flows. So at the end of the day, you go over a transformation in here. Like when you, you try to go from your repository to your view model, here you just have to change the, the way you are pushing that, right? Um, and it's, it's okay. I, I mean, if it works, it works. Uh, but maybe I can offer a different solution, a different pattern. Uh, because when you are using a uh, live data, you might be, doing something that I call an um, event. I have this little uh, class in my, uh, I was having my, in, 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 in my application, I was having this little class. Please give you the chance to push data to uh, like that, uh, push an event just only once <laughs> in, your, in, in your live data. Uh, it only push once and then stop the consummation. Uh, it handles the events if they are not consumed. Uh, I don't know, this is quite complex. Uh, I remember doing this class and thinking, this is grown. <laughs> this should be simpler. And, and it should be, it should be simpler, right? Uh, because if we are doing in, in this way, we ended up having to grab all results in over an event and you have to check that everything is going well and that is not only executed once. And I don't know, it's, it's quite, it, it, it gives you a sense of complexity that is just growing and growing, right? So flows are kind of cool and you should try it because uh, they, are, they are amazing. Uh, solve many problems of the part of the architecture, especially because if you already have flows in your repository and you want to push flows to your UI, that would just will make sense, right? It will make all the sense in the world. You just have to push it. You just, you just have to push it to the, your UI, right? Um, whatsoever, if you are pushing your flows to your UI, uh, you, end up, you might end up with some, some troubles in there, right? Uh, if you always pushing your flows, you might be wasting some resources. Uh, you might be wasting um, some, some memory and CPU use, um, especially because a flows doesn't have a dot value. You cannot access to the value just right away. Isn't it's not that simple? Uh, and flows are not as are not aware of life cycles because flows depends on only Kotlin code. They are part of the coroutines library, and like that are not. They are mainly attached to the main thread, right? So. They have their ups and downs, but there's a, a new tool that you might be uh, know that is stay flow and share flow. Um, these two flows are amazing. They have a lot of ton, pro, uh, a ton of problems, and I'm gonna tell you why. Share flow has uh, is kind of hot, uh, emits to all the collectors, uh, have some uh, exists without collectors, so you need to make uh, aware that you are 
uh, just removing the collector if you are using it. Uh, they replay cache, that's really cool. Stay flow, uh, do something that uh, read only state. Uh, they exist without collectors like uh, share flow and they are conflated values, right? So they sound complex. They sound complex. They sound more complex than like that as, but they solve a lot of problems. Uh, so if you are using a state flow and share flow, um, they have a little detail uh, when you are using the consumption of uh, your share flow and your state flow, you go to your view model, your view model has a, a maybe a share flow uh, and you want to do the, the collection between your activity in here, you need to make sure that you are not leaking memory. So I know it's like bad words saying memory leak, but you need to be very careful when you are sending flows to your UI. Uh, especially because your view model is gonna look like something like this. Maybe you have your mutable state flow and this mutable state flow has a, a low, uh, maybe a, a function, maybe it has a sealed class or something like that. But this example is just a loading. Uh, it sends a false to the UI. The view model looks quite normal. Um, inside the activity, you will have something like this. You will go to a set observer uh, and you will add uh, the life cycle the scope and you will try to launch the consumption, right? Uh, the coroutine scope will tie the life cycle owner and the life cycle the scope uh, and will make sure kinda that the, the, the collection will be destroyed. Like it will make sure that you are not kinda losing things. Uh, and, but remember, it's just kinda. <laughs> because you are gonna have to be, uh, because still this part is not life cycle awareness. It is it's consuming life cycle scope, right? But life cycle scope doesn't use life cycle owner. So we are not actually being awareness of the life cycle. So this little flow we have in here could be leaked, could be leaked and, and could be big wasting valuable resources when the user is maybe doing some rotation, maybe is going on pause, maybe is changing application, maybe is answering the phone. Uh, and if we are send, when we keep sending information to the state flow and this, the, the activity is trying to consume this state flow, it's gonna just waste memory. There's nothing here, cannot be access to it, but we are still sending information. It's, it's, it makes no sense. Why were we doing that? What is the difference with live data? Live data does the same. So what you can, uh, at the end of the day, this function, the last function will work kind of if you are not using buffer, sharing, conflate, maybe float on. There's a lot of things that uh, you need to be aware of here, uh, especially because uh, float on works as a, use something inside that, might look like a channel. We can we are going to see it uh, a, a little in, in the other slides, uh, especially because uh, there's a lot a lot of flows that might be get leaked if you are not um, if you are not keeping awareness of your life cycle. So uh, you can do something like this. Uh, you can do a, a job uh, in your activity. I know it sounds kind of weird. Uh, attach the life cycle scope, the launch of the life cycle scope to this job, trying to collect the view model uh, and just make sure that when you reach on a stop, you just get the job canceled. Uh, I, make, I mean, it makes sense. It makes all the sense in the world. You can do that and it will work and it will be um, an amazing job, but I don't know. I remember a couple of years ago, view model was brand new from, from Jetpack and everybody was hating this part. Everybody was hating this part because you ended up uh, writing a lot of boilerplate, trying to dismiss the coroutines in your view models. And it was horrible, horrible. Uh, so the Android team create a, a function that is view model on clear it when uh, the coroutine scope is just remove it and it makes sure that the job is cancelled, et cetera, et cetera, and make sure that the coroutine scope is attached to the supervisor job and everything is going well in there. So 
why will we going over this again and do this on, on an activity? Well, uh, and actually this, this is a recommended uh, website of Android. Uh, I hate it. <laughs> I don't think it's the right way to do it. Uh, just it creates tons of boilerplate. Uh, you need to be aware. Uh, you have to write things on the start and write things on the stop. It makes no sense. Why are we doing it like that? So uh, there is a way that is brand new that uh, it gives you a chance to collect safely your state flows and your shared flows with all the good things that uh, flows has. Uh, that is that at the end of the day, what we need is that we make sure that the launch and the run, uh, the launching and running of these collections happen in any specific stage, right? So we need to make sure that that happens just right out of the box, right? Uh, we need uh, a custom cancellation when it's no longer in the stage. And ob obviously, we need uh, an automatic and relaunch and cancellation. Uh, so I know it's in uh, it's on alpha. It's been a, the the brand new lifecycle runtime library for King. Uh, um, the the new library that is in alpha is on zero two right now, but it works. I I'm I'm totally serious. I have a a, a full production application that works right now. Just in this, right? It gives you the chance to have. Um, these two functions that help you to repeat on life cycle uh, and flow with the life cycle, right? It's a safe collection. It will make all the bad things that like data was having and the problems that you might be leaking memory using flows. Uh, with this, you will make sure that you are not leaking, that you are pushing the correct data to the correct code servers just, just one time or as many times as you want. Uh, you will make sure that is lifecycle awareness, that you are, not you are not leaking any type of memory or CPU. So this will make, this make all the sense in the world. So let's see what is going on inside, right? So there is two functions that you might be using. The, one, the first one is repeat on lifecycle. Repeat on lifecycle will make, uh, will make sure that you are repeating your, uh, your flow and you are collecting the flow only when it, the, only when the life cycle and the life cycle owner are in the state you are looking for, right? So we are no longer using the events. We are using the state of the, of the, of the life cycle, right? So you only need to use a uh, life cycle scope dot launch because at the end of the day, it's a coroutine. Uh, you need to use life cycle dot repeat on life cycle and just push the state where you want to be collected, right? For this case is on a start. And you can start doing the safe collect. It will be dismissed when the activity is gone. When the fragment is, is eliminated, it will be missed. If an activity is dismissed and has multiple fragments attached to the activity, the activity will dismiss, dismiss uh, all the attached observers. It will remove that and then it will remove the, the, the ones in the activity, right? So. Just make the trick, just make the trick. Let's see what is going on inside of here. Like you can see, this is not main thread awareness. It's not attached, it's not highly bound to the main thread. Uh, it makes sure that you are not going over initialize it or destroy it because that places are dangerous. We don't want you to be doing anything of that. Um, it's not the correct place to start uh, a collection. If, you, if you're doing like that, and you probably are going to have a crash in your, in your application. You're not going to collect anything. Uh, then it creates a coroutine scope. And we have the, the, the famous quit. We make sure that the dispatching will be happening uh, immediately. Uh, it will create this uh, little job. It will access to the lifecycle event observer. Uh, inside this, this function, uh, you will have a try in a, in, in a finally. Uh, the try will try to make sure the lifecycle event is going to the, the to the functions I was I was telling at the beginning of the talk. So it, it makes sure that the, the the work event we are to is the correct one and the cancel work a cancel a work event is the correct one, right? If it's the correct one, it will launch the um, 
the consumption if it is in the cancel work, make sure that everything is canceled. That's, that's quite amazing. It make charge, it takes charge of every little step of the life cycle of the activity, the life cycle owner, and then make sure that we are not leaking anything in between, right? Uh, when it's added, we have something very similar at the end of the of this line of this slide. Uh, we have a, a ad observer as a life cycle observer. The same thing that we are we were having as a live data. So if you are, you can add as many repeat on life cycles uh, observers as you want, exactly like like like, like the live data. So uh, at the end, if everything goes wrong, it just it will only remove the observer and will make sure the observer has been removed. But if you are using the correct state and the correct and the correct event of your life cycle owner, you will not have any problems. It will be canceled when the activity or the fragment are dismissed and that will be all. Um, that's really cool. Uh, for fragments, there is a little thing you need to add. Uh, you need to add the word view life cycle owner dot life cycle scope dot launch. Why? Because um, the life cycle of your fragment is different and to the life cycle of your activity. So if your fragment is in foreground, maybe your activity might be not be on foreground, right? The life cycle at difference, we know the, the little diagrams that Android has on the website of developers. So you need to be very explicit, very, very explicit about saying which fragment are you, uh, are you talking about, right? Um, you need to be very specific of, the, uh, of this part. Uh, Fragment should always use view lifecycle owner to trigger the UI update. It's, it's a must, you need to use it. Uh, if not, it might have some, some issues with the activity and some issues with the dialogue fragments. Dialogue fragments should always use also view lifecycle owner um, because it makes sense because <laughs> everything has his own life cycle. So, Please keep this in mind if you are going to start using this library. Uh, for flow with life cycle, uh, it works something like this. It's pretty much the same. You may have some uh, view life cycle scope dot launch. And when you are trying maybe to go to your view model, you have a flow that you want to collect in that way because um, the, the, this type of flows uh, use some other corroding context uh, they they use to collect the upstream flows with leaving the downstream unaffected. So you want to you want to keep that in mind. Uh, they work the same uh, pretty much. They have uh, this flow when you send the life cycle and the uh, and the mean active state. The mean active state is quite important because you might want to collect some sort of specific stage. Uh, they use um, Something called callback flow. Uh, callback flow grabs the grabs a call flow. Uh, callback flow just channel inside, which is conceptually very similar to blocking quick, uh, and has a capacity of uh, sixty-four uh, elements. So you want to be careful in there. Um, it make you it makes sense that it gives you the chance to collect this in some specific. Uh, same channel and procedural scope. Uh, so at the end of the day, this is just uh, some kind of call flow uh, that just consume repeat on life cycle with this specific mean event that uh, you will be using. And it just um, the collection of the flow of the life cycle. Uh, is, it, this, this function is quite experimental, but it makes all the sense in the world. Um, this callback uh, at the end of the day does pretty much the same that is doing on, uh, with repeat online cycle. Uh, it's kind of cool. Give it a try. It's quite amazing to have flows in your activities, uh, especially because everything is changing in Android, right? And um, I don't know if you see, but uh, today uh, Jetpack Compose reached uh, a stable version. Uh, and once Jetpack Compose has reached a stable version, it means that 
we might not need fragments or we might not need uh, activities to create a, a, an application. So um, you might ask why, <laughs> because did not I just give a talk about state flows and sharing flows with the view models and the repositories. Well, the thing is that Compose works very different, right? Compose, uh, the function used to collect the collect flows in a composable function is collect as a state, right? And uh, I, I just add this, this last slide, I, I promise I, I'm almost done. Uh, so when you have a composable function, you can make sure that the composable function has a life cycle. So it has a life cycle and can remember the life cycle. So you can start consuming all your data in here, in your composable functions, without, without the need to have an activity in, in, in have a fragment, right? Uh, Remember that Compose doesn't recompose the UIs when the host activity or fragment is not on the background. Uh, so you can have something like this and the Compose will take charge of dismissing the events using this library. Uh, I think it's really cool. I think it makes all the sense in the world. Maybe we, uh, we might be uh, reaching the future of Android just right here uh, with Compose, with uh, state flows and in, in, in a lot of other things, right? So give it a try. Uh, this is brand new uh, for the part of the Compose, uh, but give it a try for your view models and your, um, your view models, your flows and everything that is going between your repositories. Uh, it's gonna work. I do promise you that is not going to crash in production. I know I always say that, but it's not going to crash, I promise. Uh, it's quite cool. Give it a try. Uh, there is a lot of blog posts about this library already. Uh, you might want to uh, check the, the Android developer blog post uh, and just learn a little bit more. I hope you enjoyed this talk. Uh, my name is Inora Tovar, and this talk was about uh, lifecycle learners and flows. And please uh, pick, me, pick me if you need anything, if you have any questions. Um, just let me know. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen right now. I was gonna say, I enjoyed that talk. I learned a lot. Uh, and I was really glad to see you talk about how much boilerplate there was with flows because that's how I feel about it every time I sit down to do something. But it is, wow, there is a lot of boilerplate here, which I'm not super used to when we're talking about doing things in Kotlin and Android, which is like all about look how little boilerplate you need. And now it's just like, ooh, this feels like a lot. Yeah, I know. Yes, yes, it's quite complex. It's quite complex. You need to make sure that uh, everything is dismissed in your activity, that your fragments is getting, uh, or your flows are getting uh, collected from your fragment. Because if you leave one flow active in your fragment, the fragment will be attached to the activity. And that's a memory leak. So that's helpful. <laughs> That's awful, and it's quite complex. So, um, yeah. Uh, if anyone else has any questions, um, feel free to raise your hand, shout them out, put them in the chat, put them in the Q&A. Um, but thank you so much, Nora, for being oh, here. Thank uh, you for coming. I really enjoyed well. it. <laughs> I mentioned when we were getting started that we recently talked about flows at our Android Guild, and I actually think that this answered a question that popped up. And I get to go back and answer it now and be like, ho, 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 I know so uh, I will, I will, I will share my slides uh, with you if you want to uh, share it around. That will be uh, really cool. I'm going to go ahead and stop recording.